Hello and welcome to this special two-part edition of the FRSA podcast Priority Message. In part one, we covered the history from the part-time workers' less favourable treatment legislation, which came into force on the 1st of July 2000, all the way through to the first options exercise for eligible serving and retired retained firefighters, which took place in 2014-15. In the second part, we will cover the reasons behind why a second options exercise is needed and the eligibility criteria needed to take part in the new process to join or extend membership as a special member of the Firefighters Pension Scheme 2006 or 2007, if you are in Wales. So the history to the second options exercise. Well, back in November 2018, the European Court of Justice laid down its decision in the case O'Brien versus Ministry of Justice. This case involved a fee paid part time recorder within the Justice Department who brought a claim arguing that the United Kingdom was required to transpose into domestic law the part-time workers' less favourable treatment regulations by the 7th of April 2000, almost three months earlier than the actual date of the 1st of July 2000. When the case was remitted to the Employment Tribunal, O'Brien, alongside other part-time judges, contended that he was entitled to have his service prior to the 7th of April 2000 taken into account in the calculation of the amount of his pension. The Court of Justice of the European Union concluded that part-time work undertaken before the deadline for transposing the part-time workers directive on the 7th of April 2000 must be taken into account for the purposes of calculating a retirement pension. As a binding judgment, the finding therefore applies across all such claims and therefore the UK government recognised the right applies to retain firefighter claims or potential claims. In terms of retained firefighters, this means that eligible retained firefighters will be able to purchase pensionable service all the way back to the date they joined. In some cases, this means going back as far as the early and mid 60s. A period of negotiations then commenced between the relevant stakeholders, which included the government, the national employers, the FRSA and the FBU where they formulated an agreement as to the eligibility criteria and mechanisms for the process in which eligible individuals would be able to apply to purchase pensionable service retrospectively. After an extended period of negotiations on the scope and mechanics of the settlement, a memorandum of understanding was agreed by all parties on the 9th of March 2022. It was agreed that the remedy for retained firefighters affected by the O'Brien judgment would be provided by a way of a second options exercise, allowing eligible individuals the opportunity to purchase pension entitlement as a special member of the firefighters pension scheme. So So, the important aspect of this two part podcast, who is eligible or as it's legally called, who is in scope? Well, the criteria is broken down into three elements of which you only have to be eligible on one part. First part, retained firefighters employed on any date between the 7th of April 2000 and the 30th of June 2000 inclusive. Part two, Retained firefighters employed on any date between the 7th of April 2000 and the 30th of June 2000, inclusive, as well as on any date between the 1st of July 2000 and the 5th of April 2006, inclusive. Third and finally, retained firefighters employed on any date between the 1st of July 2000 and the 5th of April 2006, inclusive, but not on any date between the 7th of April and the 1st of July 2000, who were eligible to take part in the first options exercise, but were not given the opportunity to do so. It is important to note these dates accurately. We have been made aware of a letter from Thompson's solicitors 
on behalf of the FBU, which has been sent to potential in-scope individuals. The dates included in the letter are incorrect, using the wrong start date and the wrong end date for the eligibility criteria. Please note that the dates listed in this podcast are accurate. In-scope individuals do not need to have made an employment tribunal claim in order to be offered retrospective access to the firefighters pension scheme. Retained firefighters in scope will be able to purchase pension entitlement as a special member for some or all of their service between the 7th of April 2000 and the 5th of April 2006, as well as any continuous service up to the 7th of April 2000 and or continuous service from the 5th of April 2006. A retained firefighter transferring from one fire and rescue authority to another without a break in service will be treated as having continuous service with the second fire and rescue authority. Now for the more complex area. Where there is a dispute between a retained firefighter and a fire and rescue authority as to whether adequate opportunity was given to take part in the first options exercise on the basis of the evidence produced, the matter shall be dealt with under the Fire and Rescue Authority's Internal Disputes Resolution Procedure. If the dispute is not resolved, through the internal disputes resolution procedure, the individual retains the ability to pursue the matter to the pensions ombudsman. The Fire and Rescue Services Association has over 30 years of experience in representing members within the internal disputes resolution procedure and complaints made to the pensions ombudsman. But if you are not a member at the time of the options exercise commencing, Unfortunately, we will not be able to represent you. Fire and rescue authorities will be expected to start the second options exercise as soon as possible after the legislation comes into force, likely to be around October of this year, but may be later. The exercise will run for a maximum period of 18 months after it commences. Retained firefighters who elect to join the firefighters pension scheme under the second options exercise will be required to pay the relevant employee contributions with interest applied. Retained firefighters who elect to join the firefighters pension scheme under the second options exercise as a special pensioner, i.e. you've already retired, they will receive interest on their pension arrears, backdated to the point they originally retired. Retained firefighters who elect to join the firefighters pension scheme under the second options exercise and who are unable to obtain tax relief on their contributions through self-assessment will have the cost of purchasing past service reduced accordingly, in line with guidance provided by government actuaries department. In our view, it is vital that in scope individuals have the opportunity to take part in this second options exercise and access what is rightfully theirs. The FRSA will do all it can to ensure that this happens and that a fair outcome is obtained in every case. Some key points to note if you believe you are eligible to take part in the second options exercise. If you are currently serving, ensure that your employer has the correct contact details for you. This is even more important if you have retired and are no longer an employee. Request written confirmation from your employer or ex-employer that they have your current contact details. Additionally, you can make a request from your employer or ex-employer as to whether they believe that you are in scope for the second options exercise. If the fire service states that they do not believe you are in scope and you believe you are, please contact FRSA headquarters for further advice if you are a member. We believe that there will be numerous cases 
where there is a disagreement in opinion as to whether an individual is in scope or not. This is where the value of being an FRSA member is priceless, as the financial difference between a successful complaint could be worth tens of thousands of pounds to the member. We know of hundreds of cases of eligible individuals who did not receive the correct information during the first options exercise and lost out financially as a result. An example of which is that the individual was not made aware that they could pay back their historical pension contributions over a 10 year period. In our view, this is unacceptable. And the second options exercise provides an opportunity to put that injustice right. It's important to state that when this options exercise closes and legislation is passed, the ability to become or extend membership of the firefighters pension scheme as a special member or special pensioner will be lost forever. If in doubt, speak to your local FRSA official or FRSA headquarters, but advice and support will only be provided to members. If you are not currently a member, you can join via our website and links are in the show notes or just visit frsa.org.uk forward slash join hyphen FRSA. Thank you for taking the time to listen or watch this podcast And hopefully you'll be listening or watching again soon.